a mouse as light as a tennis ball, the new Viper V2 Pro. Does it really matter? It's great for Razer's marketing, advertising it at 22% lighter than the Viper Ultimate, which is like the pinnacle of what Razer has been delivering in the wireless space. And so now they've reduced the weight, they've made some changes, but there's a bit of drama. <laughs> Two things to talk about here with regards to the drama. The cause is the price, 149, many people say is way too much, especially because we're slimming down features from the Viper Ultimate that can be found for around $100 with the dock. And that is a beautiful deal. And the reason for this drama are our own expectations on what Razer should be delivering when it comes to gaming peripherals. They've been dominating in the keyboard space with the Hunter series, fantastic gaming keyboards. They've been dom dominating in the MySpace too with the Viper series, the, the Basilisk, the entire collection is fantastic. And when they go and pull a Logitech, you know, people are going to be mad. The new Viper is direct competition to the Jeeper X Superlight. And it's funny how they got there is exactly the same way as Logitech. They increased the price a little bit. They lowered the weight, which is fantastic in this space. They kept the shape the same. They removed the side button. So it's no longer this truly ambidextrous design. So it can no longer be used for left or right hand use. It's a right hand use mouse only. They've improved on the sensor. They moved some buttons around and slight modification in the texture of the body. I am surprised they killed RGB simply because it's razor, you know, we're talking about, but it makes the mouse lighter and prolongs battery life. Easy. No RGB means no synapse necessary. When it comes to mice reviews though, the more you watch, the better. See all the negatives, see all the positives, see what people are saying. Everybody's hand size is different. Everybody's play style is different. So make sure to subscribe to these awesome people. Give them some love. I'll leave a list to everyone down in the description below. So could Razer have handled this differently? Totally. Lower the price point by 10 bucks, immediately be ahead of Logitech, and boom, no more drama. Easy. I'm your PR guy. Thank you very much. Also, thank you very much for not skipping today's video sponsor. The new H1 from NZXT is the perfect hassle-free ITX experience with lots of power, pre-routed cables, a capable 140mm all-in-one cooler with its own fan controller, and massively compact GPU chamber that is actively cooled for them good temps. The H1 V2, check it out below. All right, so back to the matter of hand. The new Viper for me is perfectly comfortable. Uh, just takes like maybe three rounds of CSGO to get back into the shape with this mouse, feeling the, the weight, getting comfortable with all my flicks. And there is plenty of competition that you should also be aware of when it comes to spending your money elsewhere. I do feel like weight is becoming less important, although 58 grams is that really beautiful sweet spot for the Viper shape. You know, it's like that medium mouse, it's not too small, it's very easy to flick, really easy to get comfortable with. But also all this other competition, uh, like the Fnatic Bolt mouse, it's 69 grams, so just nine grams heavier, and it's almost half the price. Then we have the Pulsar X Lite Wireless V2, also 59 grams and super cheap at 79 bucks. Then the glorious model O Wireless at 69 grams, 69, they love that very much. Also $79, so affordable. Then the Extrify M4 Wireless at 71 grams at $99. And then we have some Logitech options with the G303 Shroud Edition making a comeback. Man, what an uncomfortable mouse to use, but my gosh, I can aim so well with it, especially in my lower left corner, like being able to just flick into that direction with all other mice seems to be slightly more difficult. With this one, because of that bizarre shape, I can flick and like just find my targets, especially in all the corners equally well. All the buttons, including the scroll wheel, feel really nice. This is their Gen 3 optical switches, uh, rated up to 90 million clicks. So no double clicking, it's all optical, instantaneous actuation, fantastic. The PTFE feet at the bottom are really smooth and you can actually hear the difference at how much lighter and smoother the new Viper is versus the original. The other big thing is weight reduction, so 22%, doesn't sound like a lot, especially when you're already dealing with something that is below 80 grams, but it actually feels pretty significant. The new Viper V2 Pro feels much lighter, more freedom in the hand versus the Viper Ultimate. Even though <laughs> they are so close in weight, I definitely prefer the new one. And they were able to achieve this with a slightly smaller battery while giving us so much extra hours of playtime. So uh, definitely improved on the tech with their batteries. 
and that of course is appreciated. It does have better battery life than the Logitech G Pro X Super Lite, so that is a win. The biggest physical differences between the V2 Pro and the Ultimate is that you can no longer store the dongle inside the body, so you have to find a way to carry it and not lose it somehow. The side grips are no longer textured built in, so they are smooth, which is nice. I actually prefer that. And we have this grip tape included inside the box so you can texture the mouse yourself. I actually prefer the smoother texture on the V2 Pro versus the built-in texture on the Viper Ultimate, just because this stuff wears off over time and being able to replace it just makes more sense to me. The browser buttons are only on the one side and they have more protrusion, which makes them easier to find, easier to click versus the more flush design button approach on the Viper Ultimate. And finally, we have the power slash DPI button on the V2 Pro at the bottom. And there's an LED at the top so you can know which DPI you're using. Again, cycles between them and you can hold it for three seconds to turn the mouse on or off. A very simplified design. And that's one big advantage with this one versus the G Pro X Super Lite because you can actually cycle between DPI on the Razer mouse, which you couldn't do on the mouse itself. With the Logitech, you have to go in the software and find the correct thing. I mean, that's just pretty stupid. Even though most pro players don't change the DPI uh, outside of like setting it once and that's it for games. But at least here, you can do it. The biggest benefits for me with the new Viper are the USB-C connection. Uh, super convenient, nice and future-proof. Plug this thing in to charge and use the included brick to support the USB adapter and the cable. So the adapter uh, and the dongle are very close to the mouse, removing any interference. And it's also very easy to charge. It's not as convenient as what we saw with the Viper Ultimate with the dock and being able to display the mouse and it being a little bit more Razer. Here, Razer went <laughs> <laughs> the Logitech route and went a little bit more simplified in its presentation. Also, the biggest advantage of the Viper family, it's one of the very few lightweight mice that has no perforations. It's a solid shell, so nothing will get stuck inside. No gunk will eventually just accumulate in the perforation spaces. That's nice. Performance-wise, man, this mouse brought me back into one my shot. CSGO days. I started one practicing. Shot. I went into competitive matches. I'm really hooked into just using and improving my skills, uh, especially with the Viper, because the shape for me is great. I feel like it would fit a lot of uh, people, and you can headshot as long as your DPI is set and it's correct. I feel like you would have a really good time. And I did, man. I've gone into some Valorant deathmatch, which I'm not a fan of Valorant, so I gravitate more towards CSGO because I know the gun mechanics much better there. I know map design. I kind of know where to go and where to pre-fire, where to look. So as much as it is about using a proper mouse, most of the games today, when it comes to competitive stuff, is also about teamwork map knowledge, spray patterns, and all that other stuff that accompany the game, you know? But it definitely helps when the mouse you're using is comfortable and it gives you confidence of knowing exactly where your cursor will go on screen. GG, Dimitri, you're a nice person, keep it up. There have been some comments floating around that if you like the new Viper, then you don't know what you're talking about. And I don't particularly agree with that direction of commentary just because the new mouse is very laser focused towards FPS gamers, right? Versus the Viper Ultimate is this all encompassing wireless mouse that has extra features and perhaps that's the way, the way forward for many users. But the Viper V2 Pro is just like the G Pro X Super Lite, very FPS heavy, super lightweight, comfortable to use, nice glide, good buttons. All the tech is perfect. The mouse doesn't creak, build quality is great. And so from that perspective, I can see how uh, this mouse would get flack because I also would love it to be a lower price point so it's more competitive in the whole mouse space, especially when it comes to Razer's own pricing. And this being their flagship FPS release, of course it's gonna be reflected in the price point. I would love for it to be lower and hopefully with time, with sales and everything else will be lower, but as of right now, I would still choose the new V2 Pro if FPS is all you're after. But if you're after some features, if you're after the left and right hand operation, if you're after the dock and saving 50 bucks, then yeah, the Viper Ultimate is the way to go. Unless you want to explore all the other options that I mentioned in this video. All right, guys, I'm Dimitri. Thanks so much for watching. Let's keep it positive. Make sure to give uh, all other reviewers some love today. And I'll talk to you 
in the next video. All right, time to play with the tennis ball.